What's up guys and welcome to the eighth video in this series. In this video we're going to cover uh, the hero flipping across that ground there in the middle and we're also going to make it so we can start the ground moving and we can make him flip across after, um, after we start the ground moving. So to start let's just get the flip animation working here. So I'm going to just call this function, I'm going to call it flip. And um, there's, if you think about it, there's a couple of states that your hero can be in. He can either be uh, kind of on the top or the bottom of that ground. So we're actually going to have to set, uh, create a Boolean variable that's going to keep track of that. So up here at the top, we're going to just make a quick little variable and we're going to call this var is upside down. And we're going to set it equal to false. So when this is equal to true, we basically know that um, the hero is going to be on the bottom of our ground. So now let's go down back down to this flip method. Um, we're gonna say when we call this method, we need to actually, we need to say if is upside down equals not is upside down. And all this is gonna do is it's gonna switch. Um, if it's false, it's gonna switch it to true. If it's true, it's gonna switch it to false. And that will just get us, um, that will help us keep track of whether or not he's on the, the bottom or not. And now we're gonna have to create another variable and we're gonna call a scale. We're going to call this a CG float, put an exclamation mark here. We're going to do an if statement right now that's going to determine um, what the scale is going to be. And so I'm going to say if is upside down, scale equals minus 1.0, else scale equals 1.0. And the reason we have to do this is that when we animate our character, we have to know whether we're going to animate him down or we're going to animate him back up. So you're going to see this in just a sec. So we're going to say, we're gonna create a couple SK actions here. I'm gonna say let translate. So we need, um, the flip action is composed of two different things. We have a translation of the hero. So we're gonna move him down some, and we're also going to uh, flip him, like scale his scale his uh, his nodes so it looks like he's actually upside down. So the first one is translate. We're gonna say translate equals SK action dot move by X. Uh, he's not moving by X, so it's gonna be zero. And we're gonna say, for the Y value, we're gonna say scale times size.height plus KML ground height. And you're gonna see um, what we're gonna do with this in a second. This is going to be a constant that we use. Um, <clears throat> back in our game scene class, you saw that we just set the moving ground to 20 right here. So there was no way our ML hero class can access the height of our moving ground. And we need to know that because we need to know how much the hero is going to be translated down. So instead of just explicitly stating this here, I'm gonna actually create a new file. And this is going to be, this is gonna be a file we call constants. So any variable that we need across um, the entire, that we need across the entirety of our program, we're gonna put in here. So I'm gonna say, um, what was it? It was KML ground height. So I let KML ground height equal 20. And we want him to be a CG float here. And I think um, I need to import, so undeclared CG float. I'm going to say import UI kit. And I think, yeah, that should, um, CG float is contained within UI kit. So that will fix your problem there. So now if we, um, go back into our ML hero class, you're going to see we have the KML ground height, which is working now. And the reason that um, this is, I probably should have explained this at the very beginning, this K right here, this is just a, this is just a Xcode Apple convention. K just means like, this is a constant. And um, that's, that's all it means. It's just a designator to kind of organize your code. So all your constants start with this K here. I'm going to say duration of 1.0. Cool. One thing we have to do just for housekeeping is let's go back into game scene. This 20 right here that we established before, I'm going to say to just set this to the KML ground height just for consistency. So if we change the ground height in our constants file, it's going to adjust everything nicely for us. So um, that's going to be our translate, except it's not going to be 1.0. It's going to be 1.0.1. Otherwise, he would translate super slow. And it would look just weird. So um, our next action is going to be the flip action. I'm going to say skaction.scale y2. So 
SK Action has this method that scales the all the nodes um, by a given Y value. And you can do this with X as well, or X and Y, but we just need Y in this instance. We're gonna set this equal to scale at a duration of 0.1 as well. So you see that the scale, so essentially we're saying scale Y to negative 1.0. So 1 uh, if, I, if you were to scale Y to 1.0, it actually wouldn't affect your node at all because 1.0 is the default value. This one minus 1.0 is just going to apply a scale shift of, um, of just by one times of your, of your nodes here. And so you kind of saw that. You'll, you'll see exactly what this means if you don't understand it completely right now when we actually run, run the action. So I'm gonna say run action, translate, run action, flip. And again, um, when you run these actions right next to each other, it's essentially like they're running them at the same time because it just takes as long as the computer takes to go to the next action, which is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a go on of a second. So um, yeah, so these are gonna be run at the same time. So now let's go in and we can test this out, our game scene. Um, so we would click, we're gonna say hero.flip instead. And let's just load this up really fast. Okay, so we have the guy breathing. When we click, you're seeing awesome. So he's doing our flip um, that we wanted and perfect. So now let's get it so, um, that's kind of fun. Uh, the, when we click, the hero starts running forward and then when we click again, from there on out, he's flipping, um, flipping to the bottom or flipping to the top, depending. So we are going to, <coughs> Uh, we're going to go to our game scene. We're going to create a variable here and we're going to call this variable is started because our game scene needs to know um, when the game has actually started to know whether or not it should be starting the ground and making the hero run or it should be making the hero flip. So we're going to create a function here. We're going to call this just start just to keep ourselves organized. We're going to go into our touches began method and we're going to say if this game is not started start the game. And else if the game is started, we're gonna say hero.flip because those are the two possible outcomes in our game right now in terms of uh, touches on our screen. In the start method, we're just going to, we're gonna set this is started method equal to true to keep track of that. We're gonna say hero.stop to stop the hero from breathing, hero.start running to get the hero animation, running animation to begin. And we're also going to say moving ground.start as well. So now you see when we run this, this is going to um, have all of our animations thus far kind of working to create our game. So we're gonna say tap, the guy starts running. Now if we click again, you're gonna see that from now here on out, the guy is just flipping back and forth. And um, awesome, that's what we're trying to do here. So in the next videos, I think we're gonna be covering um, we're going to be co covering cloud generation. So this is just, the next video is going to be actually entirely optional, um, but I'll explain it in the next one. It's just to kind of create a scene that looks a little bit more, a little bit more fun in the background.